Okay, I think we're going to get started because we have a very, very busy agenda. We're going to talk about the technology today and how to, how to do, how to create content. So we have a lot to go over. Um, and, you know, that being said, welcome to the second online course development meeting. Um, I want to thank you, like the ones who participated on the voice thread and the ones who participated in the Google Drive document. It really helps a lot to build that, you know, like sense of community and exchange ideas. Because I don't want this to be just like me sitting here and talking. And the ones who got lost trying to participate. <laughs> I was going to say, I was going to say that if you had any trouble logging into Blackboard, or you know, get into Google Drive or VoiceThread, please uh, talk to me after our group meeting so I can make sure that you, you know, get in and you know, have all that set up. Um, da -da -da. Okay, so one thing before we start, I have a field here that is going to talk about library resources, but before we do that, um, on the VoiceThread that we talked about like the syllabus template, some of you uh, mentioned about it being like really busy and um, graphically. So I want to get your feedback. What is it? And I took took uh, took out like the the bubbles the, and and all that with like tips and explanation. What is it about it? I want to like understand what is it about it that makes it like so busy. And Lexi gave me some feedback too. Um, but how would you make it different? It's I guess that that's my question. Bad. Bad. Yep. Okay. So how would you do it different? Like not have it on the on a on a table, I, the colors. Yeah. I wouldn't have it on a. Personally, I wouldn't have it on a table. Mm -hmm. I would have that information at the very top. Um, mm -hmm. The most traditional syllabus. Mm -hmm. like That's that. what Lexi mentioned. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. And I think just because it's distance edit, I think if they see a traditional syllabus, I think that that would be easier. But I would definitely take it out of the table. Right. Okay. That's good. Anybody else? Da, 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 da. Yes. Um, personally, I always make my still so This isn't about the busy issues. Uh huh. Excel. No. Yeah, I noticed that. I wonder why. Because why? then I can move boxes and stuff and not worry about things doing what I don't want them to do. So if I want to move stuff, take stuff out, dates, whatever. But can't you do the same thing with Word? You can, but when you take something and move something in Word, you have such limited ability of where formatting issues. Do formatting, you? yeah. Huh. But in Excel, I can make my boxes and you know merge things, move them, open them, close them. Okay. I want without having to worry about Word moving stuff here, there. And everything. Yeah. That's yeah. That's very interesting. You're, you're the first person I ever see, you know, exactly. doing. Um, well, I teach uh, in liberal arts and nursing oh. health. Ah. Nursing. Okay, and one more. <laughs> They're more organized. No, just, no, I'm just, I, I'm in an SLC and I work with somebody out of the chemistry department and the health professions department and they're all about the Excel and then there's me who's like, no, make it Word. I don't, I can't work Excel. Make it word. But I guess that's a question I have then is if I make it Excel and people, so is that an issue then for someone to open it or whatever if most syllabi are in Word. Even if you make it in Excel or Word, I would suggest you you make it a PDF when you upload it. So nobody can modify anything. So it really doesn't matter what you used to <laughs> actually make it, as long as, like at the end, you can have a PDF that you can show them. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes? I have two things. One is, is um, we talked last week uh, about do we want students to sign? <laughs> Uh -huh. at the bottom, and I didn't, you know, I didn't know if that was something we still wanted to include. You know, mm -hmm. like I agree, I've read the syllabus. I think we talked about that a little bit. Right. It seems to me that I'm doing a hybrid class right now, as you know, but it seems like there was so much information about where you have to go to learn how to go on distance ed. That's what seemed like a lot to me. It seems like you go to Google and you do that, then you need headphones, and then if you need help, you go here, and then if you get help, you need there. And I think, and I'm wondering if that student could get lost in that without even looking what the course was about. Yeah, and that's why everything needs to be laid out in this, like on the syllabus, because they, Blackboard, they're going to get lost. I mean, that's... No, but I mean, even in the syllabus, that was so much information. It, there, it has to be that way. Well, yeah, I know, but I'm just yeah. saying that, look, it's, it's yeah. busy. Mm -hmm. And there are certain things that have to be there 
per my department. Yes. And so, I mean, there's just pages and pages and yeah. pages that I have to put in of standards and how they're mapped. Yeah. This standard and that standard yeah. and the other standard. So that naturally makes it bigger. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you listened to my comment on voice thread, um, but even if they don't read the whole syllabus, they need to know that the information is there for them to go back. I remember when I was a student, if I, I never read the whole syllabus, I know. <laughs> but if I, if I didn't understand something, I know, shame on me. <laughs> but, if, but if I had to go back and look for information, before asking my professor, I would go to the syllabus. So even though it's long and I was like, I'm not going to read all that, um, when I need it, I'm going to go there to look for the information. So that's the single place where you can find everything you need. Yeah. As far as the student signing thing goes, I wanted them uh, some acknowledgement that they read it, but I don't, you know, I don't know how they're going to get that across to me with the signing. I don't know if they're going to bombard me with emails. Saying well, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I just so brought what up I did was, yeah, yeah, I liked it and I thought about it. So what I did was um, I'm choosing to open this uh, blog post or discussion post on Blackboard that just says <laughs> they have to submit a post in there saying I have read the syllabus. I understand and mm -hmm. agree to all these terms. That way I'm not getting bombarded by email, but then I can see who's read it and their acknowledgements are all right. Ready. Oh, that's a good idea. Right. Anyways, we're a little bit pressed with time, so um, I decided to have Phil here because uh, when I had like that one-on-one uh, -on -one meeting, some of you did mention that how do I get resources and put it like um, on my course? Like if uh, Alan was like, you asked like if you, if he doesn't, he doesn't want to use the textbook. So if he doesn't want to have a textbook, what resources can he use and what do we have available? Uh, for you. So um, I want to introduce to Phil Orr, our distance learning librarian, and he's going to show you some of the things that we have um, at the library. Yep. I see a lot of new faces. I'd like to take the time for each of you to introduce yourselves and tell me what, uh, what you teach, but in the interest of time, I think you better be wrong. Um, let's see. There you go. Oh, thank you. Oh, yes. Can I have you? Oh, sure. I know, I can do this too before. I had like everything open. <laughs> Let me, while this is coming up, let me start by asking uh, if any of you in the, in the room have ideas of uh, particularly library resources that you would like to um, uh, Im embed in your classes. Anybody? Yes. I love uh, the LibGuides. I love all the <coughs> things that you know, allow students to distinguish between scholarly and popular sources. That's just a three minute tiny little video that I always post on my syllabus. Then there are these other libguides that have that research 101. Um, there's also need a topic libguide. So if you're asking them you know, to write pre-write, there's a libguide that helps them to even come up with a topic. I really love libguides. Very good. Thank you. I, I appreciate the, uh, your uh, use of them. Yeah, and I should pay her. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she can be very valuable. Okay. Some of you may not be familiar with our libguides. I'll try to show you here. Ask me later and... Say hi to Internet Explorer. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's open on that first link. So there we go. Yeah. Here are the libguides that uh, she was referring to. And do you mind me asking your name and what you teach? Um, so Kanye Gupta and I teach English. Okay, I, I've seen your name. I know you've brought your classes over to the library many times. I've just never had the opportunity to teach one of them. but. Uh, we appreciate your support uh, in many ways. Uh, the uh, LibGuides, she mentioned Research 101, which is a kind of a compendium of lots of different things about doing research in the library. And each page or, uh, within a LibGuide has its own URL. So for example, you might not want to send your students to the whole entire Research 101, but you could go in there and find the part about Let's say you were doing something, or an assignment that uh, had to do with government documents. 
and you wanted to send them to just the, the page that has to do with government documents, you could give them that URL in your Blackboard course site. Um, <clears throat> she also mentioned, uh, well, we're in Research 101, whether we want to be or not. Um, she also mentioned uh, the online tutorials. And uh, here's a link to all of our online tutorials. And sometimes you can find ones like the scholarly versus popular, helping students distinguish. Um, let's see. I may not, I may not have clicked that. There we go. Um, a lot of you, I'm sure, use APA citation. Uh, here's a set of tutorials, actually. Um, oh, here's one I, I use a lot with uh, classes that I teach. It's called research. I think it's called research assignments. Be down here at the bottom. Yeah, that's, here it is, re research assignments. Because <clears throat> I, I work with a lot of classes that do annotated bibliographies and literature reviews. And uh, this is a brief tutorial on uh, uh, what, you know, how to construct an annotated bibliography. Well, this, this page right here on annotated bibliographies has its own URL. And if I want to... Uh, direct students to uh, something related about literature reviews, which is a, has another really great tutorial on it. This is, was done at North Carolina State University. It's about nine and a half minutes long. I show this in lots of classes that I teach. Uh, it has its own unique URL, so I can take them directly to that page. Each page in the LibGuide has its own URL that you can embed. So uh, if you need help finding those kind of resources, you know, where are they on our in this, within the LibGuides or on our web pages, don't hesitate to, to uh, give me a call or shoot me an email. I'd be glad to sit down and, and help you do that. I also want to uh, show you another document that's very out of date. I'm ashamed to even show it to you. But um, I do have a student worker who's working his little heart out trying to get this updated. Um, we went we weren't thinking about this presentation. It just needs to be updated. I mean, regardless of whether we have this presentation or not. But under the Distance Learning Services webpage and under Guides, <clears throat> right here, there is a document called Getting Library Resources into Blackboard. It's the last one down here. here. And it's a very long and intimidating document. Ultimately, what we're going to do, we're going to put this information in a LibGuide format. But that's, that's even further down the road than this, this current update that we're doing. And I usually send this, uh, whenever I send out my message to all of you at the beginning of the semester, if you're teaching a distance learning class, I always send out a message to all faculty. I <clears throat> hope this comes up here. Um, I'll always make reference to this and give you a link to this, this page. Um, and I wanted to take the, the remainder of my time today uh, just kind of going over this document and trying to show you what it, we have. And even though all of the information is, it, it's not as good as it could be. I mean, the steps here, you'll quickly recognize that we no longer have a control panel and Blackboard. Um, it's, uh, but you've got it figured out. You know where to go. I forget what the label is in black. Um, well, there's another. Yeah, yeah. You don't even go to the control panel. You just go to the section of the of your Blackboard site, where up there you're adding content or creating. Uh huh. And you click on that down arrow and click on the URL, and that's what you would do. Well, <clears throat> you can link to all kinds of web materials. You know this, don't you? Uh, you can link to online to tutorials off of YouTube or uh, some professional association website, whatever. Uh, but I wanted to be, make you aware of uh, some things in from the library's web page that you may not have thought about adding. And for example, <clears throat> you could go to our recommended library databases um, and, and, and link to that. 
uh, lib guides have already been mentioned, the online tutorials. Uh, this is, <laughs> we don't even call it net library anymore, uh, but uh, specific books. And I am going to show you that here in a minute. Not so much the net library, what used to be called net library, which is now EBSCO eBooks. Uh, because uh, the problem up until fairly recently about linking to electronic books is that most of the books up until fairly recently or within the last couple of years that we uh, made available electronically were one user at a time. And so you could put them in your course. There's no problem with that. But if you make it a required reading and you got everybody waiting until Thursday night to, to read the thing that's due on Friday morning and they're all trying to get in there, they're not gonna, it's not going to work. But we have, in the last couple of years, purchased uh, co a collection of electronic books that are multiple simultaneous users. So you might even find a book in there that you could use as a, a supplemental reading or even a textbook. Not like a textbook like Thompson, uh, Gail Thompson or whatever. But I'm talking about like in a history class where they s sign multiple books or a literature class. Uh, you may find something that would save your students money because it's a, a multiple uh, user title. Uh, the Contact Rice Library, Rice Library's uh, Distance Learning Services webpage, all of these kinds of things you could link to. And I'm going to give you an, show you an example of, of, of that later on. Uh, as you scroll down this document, uh, the next thing that's discussed is linking to electronic course reserves. How many of you use electronic course reserves in your classes <coughs> or even know what I'm talking about? Good, some of you do. Um, you know, you, you probably all put things on reserve at the library where the student has to go and get the item from the checkout counter, whether it's a video or, um, or whether it's a, a, a test or even an article that you want them to read and they check it out and they make a photocopy of it and they take it back and okay well you can ha you can do this electronically with things as well and uh, and you can also link out of blackboard specifically to those electronic reserves so that'll give you another thing that you can think about you can obviously if it's a if it's an article in a database you can uh, uh, link to it as well. And this comes to the next, the last section of, the, of this document, the biggest part of it, is how to link to electronic, to articles in library databases. So, uh, what is, what's your field of study? Me? Mm -hmm. uh, English folklore. In English folklore. Okay. Um, let's take, for example, uh, let me do this. This, the rest of this document explains how you do this for uh, various, uh, I'm going to go here to databases, we're just going to, we're going to go into Academic Search Premier, that's a, you know, the old standby that students all use, and I'm just going to do a quick and dirty search here for folklore, okay, once it comes up. And we'll limit this search to academic journals, and we'll limit it to full text. Okay, so we'll just do folklore as a subject. Search it. All right, we got 4,436 items, and. I, I'm in an academic search premier rather than MLA because MLA is not ostensibly a full text database, whereas this one is. I could have found uh, uh, full text things in MLA. Now I've put the uh, academic journal limit on it and I narrowed down to 2,387. Now I'm going to go back and put the scholarly peer review, review see if we, yeah, got a few less. And then I'm going to put the full text limit on it. Okay, we'll just take this first article, it's full text in this database. Now, I always tell students not to put that full text limit on there because just because it's not full text in this database doesn't mean it's not full text in another database. And you'll only know that if you, if you, by checking the check for availability link. Okay, so here we have this article, Truth, Lies, Mules, and Men. 
I'm going to bring it up here. And in this database, does everybody know this? Am I preaching to the choir here? The permalink. Right there, I clicked on the permalink. And if I want to embed this article in my course, there it is. And this permalink has the library's proxy prefix on it, which you have to have in front of everything. If you don't put it there, uh, your off-campus students, your distance education students, aren't going to get to this. Now, the students here on campus, they'll, it won't make any difference to them. But the off-campus students got to have that proxy prefix. And that document that I showed you, that explains it in there. Okay? So, <clears throat> you embed that. Now, when you make these links, here's my recommendation to you. That you tell the students in somewhere in the text uh, what the name of the article, give them the full citation to the article, and tell them what database you got it out of. Why? Because if for some reason that link doesn't work, they don't, can't come back to you and say, it didn't work and I don't have an excuse. Now you've told them, I told you it was in this database and here's the full citation. You should be able to find it, even if the link doesn't work. But it, sh it w should work. I had a student on the phone just yesterday, nursing student, who was, it wasn't working for her. And so we got it to her, but, but it was a problem on her end, I think. So anyway, this is the kind of thing you can do. Um, let, uh, I'm going to run out of time here very quickly, but we have a new database for good or bad, <laughs> I shouldn't have said that, um, uh, called Filmmakers Library Online. Let me encourage you to check that out. Like it? Love good. It. For good. For good. Thank you. Uh, because you can embed a link to number of uh, full length, uh, this is about a about all we have got to offer you right now uh, for video. Mm -hmm. uh, our new ProQuest Central, which is another brand new database, very large, it does have some video in it. But this Filmmakers Library Online is all video. And it has transcripts of the video. So that could be good for certain kind of learners. Okay? And, um, and uh, you can very easily see the embed. If you don't find it, on, uh, the, the link. Just make sure that you put that proxy prefix in front of the URL. All of the EBSCO databases and all of the ProQuest databases, that's ABI Inform, that's uh, ProQuest Central, that's ProQuest Health and Medical, those are the ProQuest ones, and all the EBSCO ones, PsycInfo, PsycArticles, Medline, CINAHL, Academic Search Premier, um, and on and on and on the list goes, the proxy prefix is already embedded. ProQuest and EBSCO automatically embed the proxy prefix. Basically everything else, like Bio1, um, all of those, Filmmakers Library, you're going to have to embed it yourself. And you have to make sure it's there, otherwise the off-campus people won't get to it. So, now, um, let me show you real quickly here. I don't know whether I can do this or not. Do we have anybody in here from nursing? We do, but they're not here today. They're not here today. Okay. Uh, here we go. I should go here. With this, I will close. I want to leave my card with each of you. Um, and please contact me if I can be of help to you. I'm really anxious to work with faculty members to help you get library resources in your, into your class. I didn't really show you how to do it, but I think you're, you've shown them how to put URLs in. I don't need to go over that. I, uh, I don't need to go over that. I do want to show you a class. Or I've done this in multiple classes over the years. Um, I got a new password and I'm still not very good at typing it.
every year, uh, Joanne Arts and I do a, an intensive, an on-campus intensive for the Doctor of Nursing Practice students. And uh, we do a section in their Blackboard uh, site call, and we have it labeled Library Support. And we put all this stuff in there for them to have easy access to. And this is the kind of thing I'm talking about you could do as well. So we've got a link to the Distance Learning Services webpage and all the orientation materials, um, subject research guides, recommended websites, tutorials, interlibrary loan services, document delivery services, and how to cite sources, LibGuide, and so forth. So we put it all there for them. And uh, uh, I, I've uh, put uh, books, electronic books. That's another thing I really wanted to talk to you about. And if you don't mind, uh, giving me maybe two more minutes, Laura. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to show them that. That's, that's one of the main things they want. Videos, books. Yeah. Uh, I'm just not very good with this computer, I'm afraid. Nobody's good. <laughs> Here we go. <clears throat> you have to go back to home. Go back to home here, you think? And that's really not quite what I wanted. That's all right. Uh, let's try this. Here we go, I think. All right, let's take a look here. If you want to, if you want to know what collection of books has our multiple simultaneous users the the books in the ebrary academic complete if you want to make a note of that ebrary academic complete and i'm just going to do a real quick search here with the keyword phrase let's get somebody else's subject area here see if i can Search this as a phrase, keyword anywhere. And Lee, I know you teach communication. Mm -hmm. uh, any certain field in communication more specific than that? Is, or is communication good enough? Just. OK. Well, I'm just going to type in communication yeah. right now. Let's see what comes up. And this may not be anything you'd be interested in, but. <clears throat> okay, uh, stories that move mountains, storytelling and visual design for persuasive presentations. Let's pretend like that's something we're interested in here. Um, okay, folks, all you need to do, well, first thing I'm going to do, I want to do, and I want you to do, is click on this link right here, which will take you to the book and verify that it is a multiple user title because even though by and large everything in the eBrary Academic Complete uh, is a multiple simultaneous user, there are some things that are not. Uh, and it has to do with the difference between say a university press as opposed to a commercial press. So let's cl uh, we'll click on that, but uh, before we do that, I want to show you just right click and copy the shortcut and this will have the proxy prefix embedded in it so that's you don't have to add anything to it and this will take you to the book so if if you wanted to add this book to your course let's verify that it is a Notice it says right up here, unlimited user title. So this book could be, could be, we could all be looking at this book simultaneously if we wanted to. Whereas if, it, uh, if it's just a one user title, you know, it just means one user at a time. So if that was a book you wanted to use as an, a supplemental reading or whatever, you could put it in your Blackboard course and maybe save your students some money. So, well, listen, uh, I'll leave my cards here for each of you, and I appreciate it. Any questions I can answer before I leave? Well, I appreciate your attention, and thank you, Laura, for the invitation. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. Uh -huh.
Thank you. Welcome. Please contact me if I can help in any way. I'm expecting a call, Kathy. <laughs> you know where to find me. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Alan. I wanted uh, you all to come and present. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Work out with the Um, is that good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I wanted uh, Phil to come and present because we're going to be, or the plan is that you start developing your lectures and your content in the next three weeks before our meeting, and then we're going to have three more weeks where you're going to continue working, but that's the idea. So now you know where to get some of the content, and I also put really good resources on um, the, the Blackboard website about, you know, um, ADA how to make it ADA compliant and also copyright um, and I'll show you that later. Uh, the agenda for today, okay, we already uh, had Phil here and uh, what we're going to do is to, I'm going to give you an overview of the different types of lecture recording options that we have for you. Um, the idea is that you um, get an idea of what we have and you identify your needs first of all. Um, and then you decide which ones you want to use and then you're going to meet with one of our student technology consultants to get a one-on-one -on -one, um, training and not really one-on-one -on -one. I mean we have like seats uh, three seats so it's gonna be a maximum of three people per session okay and we have a sign-up sheets that we're gonna do um, at the end but that's the idea okay <laughs> oh that's true uh, I also put the link online so you'll be able to sign up there too and actually, do you mind giving her the sign-up sheet um, for, to see when she, and that, that way you can, uh, she needs to leave at four, so that's why I'm giving her that right now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we have uh, two different types of lecture, um, not yet, different types of lecture recording options. We have live online lectures and then we have pre-recorded lectures and obviously live lectures are the one where you're going to meet online with your students and you're going to have as if it was like a face-to-face -face lecture but it's going to be online okay um, and then we have pre-recorded lectures when you record it and then you make it available on your blackboard site so you're not going to actually meet with your students but you're going to make your recordings available okay so the live recordings we have Panopto, we have GoToMeetings and Blackboard Collaborate and for the pre-recorded lectures, we have um, Blackboard Collaborate, EduCreations, GoToMeetings, Panopto, ShowMe, and VoiceThread. And we're going to go over all of that. Um, now, first of all, let's think about what you want first before you start looking at all the technology because it can, it can be overwhelming. Let's identify the ones you want first. And think, the first thing you need to do is think about the goal of your course and the learning objective. For instance, um, you want to improve students' communication skills, verbal communication skills, then it has to be sort of like a discussion. So do think about that. What happened to you? Gosh, okay. <laughs> okay, sorry. Well, uh, as I was saying, think about what you want to accomplish before you select um, a technology. How much time do you have? You know, if you're teaching in the summer, are you going to be able to complete all the lectures by the end of the semester? That's something that you need to uh, have in mind. Do you want to do something that you want to use a technology where you can record everything at once, or do you want something you can come back and edit? Okay. Do you want to be able to share different type of documents with your students, or you want to be able to do screen recording where you're talking and showing them through those documents? Do you want to show your face when you are like in your recording? No? <laughs> I already see the, the, the reaction. Or do you just want to have a voiceover? Do you want, if you select um, something that would involve discussion, would it be synchronous discussion, real-time discussion, or would it be asynchronous where people just put their comments like voice thread whenever they have time? 
do you want do you want it to be purely lecture, just you talking, or do you want something that would encourage discussion? Do you want this to be available in a mobile device where your students can carry with them? And do you want this tool to have Blackboard integration? Some of the tools do not have, and you need to put a link and link it so they can go to that site. Some of them do, so that's something we're going to see. Okay, so I'm going to give you, um, Lexi, we're going to give you this self-evaluation, and you're going to check the ones that apply to you. And then uh, we're going to identify that te those technologies that meet those requirements. If you have any questions, you don't know what something means, you let me know. I don't have time. Yeah. <laughs> I just check. I don't have time. So what does it mean? Oh, if you don't have time, like I really don't have time to complete all the lectures. Yes. Like if I don't have time to to do, I don't know. If I'm teaching a 16-week courses and I don't have time right now to do 16 lessons by the end of the semester, then you check. Like it has to be something that will allow you to do something really like fast. So but I think you guys are in a good position because right now if you're teaching in the summer it's only five weeks, right? And then if you're teaching in the fall we have enough time. No. <laughs> That's my assumption. No. Oh okay. Yeah. I mean, seven lectures from here to, you know, the end of the semester is not too bad, so, yeah. So you say only one lecture per week? You can do that. I mean, it's up to you. You can do them all in one sitting if you want, you know, but you, it depends on what you have. Like, do you have the content? You know, yes, if you have, yeah, if you have the content, then, then yeah. Some people need to create the content from scratch, so. Yeah. Okay. So let's give them the other one. Do we have to submit this at the end of all? Oh, that's for you. Yeah. That's for you to identify which tools better meet your needs, right? So if you don't have time, then Panopto and VoiceThread are the easiest options um, and we'll see later why and write down the ones or like circle the 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 technologies that match your checkbox whatever you check so if you check I don't have time make sure you pay attention when when I talk about Panopto and when I talk about voice thread does that make sense yeah so um, yes, mm -hmm. you can use both, yeah. You can use as many as you want. It depends as many as you can handle, <laughs> how many you can handle. So you are going to write down all the technologies that apply to you. But if there's something that does not apply, then you just, you know, ignore that. Um, As somebody who's already answering 8 billion emails uh -huh. regarding outside sources, outside websites, what's the easiest one for students to use? It really depends on what you are referring to because what, are you going to use, are you going to use like live lecture recordings or are you going to use, because the easiest for them, easiest, easiest would be just to watch a video, but is that really going to help them learn, you know? So. So, um, let's see. Da -da 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 -da. Mm -hmm. 
So did everybody note the technologies that apply to them? Yep. Okay. Perfect. So let's continue. Okay. So we were talking about live online lectures and pre-recorded lectures. Let's start with live online lectures. We have two different types. The first one is limited student participation. So you're going to broadcast your lectures, your face-to-face -face lectures, and students can um, can participate just with a chat, so it, you won't be able to listen to them or anything like that. And then we have tools that do encourage student participation, and we're going to see that later. So let's focus on the, the one that has limited participation, and this is Panopto. So Panopto, you can broadcast face-to-face -face lectures, and the students can join via Blackboard, so that's easier for them if they have I mean, they know everything is on Blackboard, so they'll be able to, you know, log in. Um, they can participate through an online chat. There's no voice, there's no video for them in their under end. You are going to be recorded. And as you can see here, we have um, this professor teaching. And usually, you would have also, like, the PowerPoint slides and everything, so they'll be able to watch it, but um, not participate as much. Uh, if you're going to use a classroom to do this, you would need um, the classroom to be equipped with a camera, like that one right there. Um, but it does look like that. <laughs> 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 That's not real. It depends, yeah. It depends on the camera on your class, on your classroom, yeah. Um, you'll be able to record your computer screen, PowerPoints, and from the classroom camera as well. Um, let's see. The students, an advantage is that the students don't need um, a headset and they won't need a, a webcam. That's a requirement that you won't, you won't, ha you won't have to require that. Um, and for students who are unable to attend, you can make that recording available later. So that's another advantage. Okay, let's talk about the ones where student participation is really encouraged. And that is the first one, Blackboard Collaborate. So with Blackboard Collaborate, this, you know, again, this is a live session. Uh, you, you're going to be able to interact with your students live. You will have a whiteboard where you can draw and circle things and do all that. Um, students are required to have a headset and a webcam, so that's something you need to have in mind. Um, you can share a desktop, you can show slides, you can navigate the web, you can exchange files. Students can communicate with you in different ways, and you can communicate with students in different way, video, audio, and text, so they can chat and everything else. Um, other advanced features are they have like a poll where you, if, you have, if you ask a question, they can send yes or no, they can raise their hand, they have like emoticons like with smiley faces and all that. Um, and something really nice about Blackboard Collaborate is that it has breakout rooms. And why my slide is not showing the whole thing? Okay, I'll have to fix that later, sorry. Um, so breakout rooms on Blackboard Collaborate. So if you have like a group activity, you can send them to different, to different rooms and they would have like their own whiteboard and everything. And then you, you bring them back to the main room. So that's something really nice. Um, but yes. Because they're going to talk to you. There's sort of, there's like a technical, there's a technical thing, and I, I don't know exactly that. Yes, they're, they're, you're going to hear the feedback. And you're going to, first of all, you're going to hear, if they don't use headsets, you're going to hear every, everybody else's background. So if someone shuts the door, wherever they are, you're going to hear it. And, and not only that, if they don't use the headsets, there's going to be an echo. So whatever you said, is, you're going to hear the feedback. So that's why um, Go to Meetings has like a, feedback blocker or something, so it's not, re it's not required. Yeah, but if they don't do it, if they don't remember, then, you know, that is going to be really, really, yes. Is there a difference between how many, I would, you know, what you're saying, Austin, is sometimes I think what happens is even if you have a mute button, they turn it on, uh -huh. you can hear everything in the background, I think. I think what yeah. you're saying is you, don't, you can talk on this without a headset, mm -hmm. but I think the headset helps because it will hear right. people come in your house that's on the Exactly, exactly. And also like the feedback, the echo, that is, yeah, yeah I not nice. About the number of students that can join. Yes. Your, oh, I'm going to get there, oh, yeah. 
Oh, you're fine. <laughs> um, I'm not sure about the difference between GoToMeeting and Blackboard Collaborate. Mm -hmm. I think some of it depends on how many can join, right? Yes, okay. yes. Um, so with Blackboard Collaborate, you need to, and I would say with any live recording, live session, you need, you need to ask them to have a wired connection. Because with, with wireless, it's not stable. So the, the, ear, the bandwidth goes up and down. And sometimes you're talking to someone and then the connection drops. So if they have a wired connection, it's more stable. So you need to have a wired connection and they need to have a wired connection. And do you guys know what I mean when I say wired? Right. Yes. Okay. Um, and this applies to everything. You need to have detailed instructions of how to use this on the syllabus. Um, again, everything needs, I believe anything needs to be included on the syllabus. Um, da -da 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 -da. Oh, online meeting schedule and links should be posted on Blackboard. So everything, all the instructions, put it on Blackboard. And you cannot see it there, but there's a maximum of 100 people for Blackboard Collaborate and six webcams. Okay? So only six videos can be at the same time, but 100 people can join. So usually you just ask, you know, if there's, if you want the seventh person to, to talk. I mean, you won't have six people talking at the same time, so that's, you know, so, so whoever is talking is the one with the video, basically. Okay. Yes. Okay, so for, for a class where you have people that are coming online at different times, this would not work? No. Okay. No. So that's what I meant when I said synchronous versus uh, asynchronous. We do have an option for asynchronous discussion, which is voice thread, what I put like on our, on our first week, where everybody can post comments and, and have that discussion, but it's not real time. Okay. Yeah. But you could pull up like subgroups if there's a group project, say a range of time where you can yep. get together. Exactly. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now, Blackboard Collaborate and GoToMeetings is something that must be scheduled with distance learning. Um, so you just send us an email to DL Help, and I put that on, on the Blackboard Collaborate. I mean, on the Blackboard website. You just send an email to DL Help at usi.edu, and you say, "I want um, a Blackboard Collaborate meeting to be scheduled this day at this time." Okay. Yes. Can Blackboard Collaborate sessions be recorded so that people can come back later? Yes. Okay. Yes, and you can make it available later. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, and with Blackboard Collaborate, another thing is you need to have Java updated all the time. So before you, um, yeah, <laughs> Java. <laughs> okay, and this is what we're talking, you know, sessions can be recorded and show later. Um, and the sessions can be as simple as like sending them a link where they can access the recording. Now, this is an example of a Blackboard Collaborate recording. And I don't know if you met... Dr. I forget his name. Fur Furham McVernon? I don't remember. Yes, and he, he passed away uh, last year, but he was really engaged like in, you know, um, all this like online participation tools and all. And, and he wasn't even tech savvy, but he really embraced all these technologies. And I want you to see one of his videos here. So when she gets him inside, she is drawing his bath. I want you to have an idea of what it looks like, right? Close his robe open, and with his own sword, she butchers him. Now, of course, we don't see any of that because the Greeks did not allow violence on the stage. Neither did we until the last generation. Now that we have a lull in the action, anybody else want to get into this? And this person is raising their hand. So. Professor? Yes, Marie. Hi. Um, you know, I was just thinking about everything you said about, um, you know, how um, the Greeks would not allow uh, that kind of violence. Um, Any kind. Any kind, any kind of violence, and now and you see that the the camera switched to whoever is talking. They, there's no nothing left to the imagination. No. You know, it's just all given to you. 
Um, and I think there was a lot to be said about leaving something to the imagination and what you can take from it. Because everybody... Anyway, you get the idea, right, of how, how a class would look like. Because I want you to make an, like an educated decision when, when you select the tool that you want to use. Um, what was the graphic that you had there? Was that just a, a PDF or something? Or was he marking on it or anything? Yeah, you can upload um, PowerPoints. You can upload uh, PDFs. So he didn't, he didn't draw that. He hand wrote it and then uploaded it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But can you have something there and, and write as you're talking? Yeah, but it's kind of hard to write with the mouse. So I would say have something prepared. And then if you want to highlight things while you're talking, then you can do that. Mm -hmm. What? Uh, but that's but not within this. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So go to meetings. So GoToMeetings, it's basically very similar to Blackboard Collaborate, but you can communicate via phone. So if you have students that um, are, don't have a very good internet connection, then they can call in. So that's a really good advantage. Um, they don't require headsets or webcam. I don't know, there's something in their software, the technology is better in terms of you know, feedback and echo and all that. Um, you can share your desktop, you show slides, and exchange files. And again, you can communicate via video, audio, and text. Uh, now, the difference between uh, Blackboard Collaborate and GoToMeetings is that the recorded file, once you record that session, you want to make it available for your students, is going to be on your local machine. So you have to or upload it to Blackboard, which Walter will kill me if I tell you to do that, <laughs> or you need to upload it to YouTube or Vimeo or something and then link it to your Blackboard site. Um, you have a maximum of 25 people and six webcams. And the webcam activity is not included so, uh, on the recording. So if you record the session, that the webcam where you're talking and students are talking, that's not going to be recording. It's just the PowerPoint or the screen recording and the, um, and the voiceover. Okay. And this is a video that summarizes, I couldn't find like a faculty here using GoToMeetings and Megan sent me a link but then it's like a PC thing and I have a Mac and I couldn't make it but um, this is sort of like a promo video. Um, let's see. Go. I forgot I uploaded it already. Sorry, this is really slow. Okay. Move your ideas forward faster. Share your screen. Mark up changes with the drawing tool. Or give presenter controls to a colleague for a totally immersive online meeting experience. Record the entire meeting with the click of a button for review later. And HD Faces video conferencing lets you meet face to face with your team, even if they're half a world away. Wherever work happens, you can collaborate simply with GoToMeeting. Start your free trial today. 
and everybody's happy and smiling. Is it a service that is Yes. So business learning pays for it, and you you can use it. Yeah. So that's why we need to schedule it. Like you need to schedule it with us because we pay for Blackboard Collaborate and for go to meetings. So you have like we're gonna use our ID and our account and just give you the links to um, to use it. Yeah. So you need to let we need to let you know what time we're gonna right. use so we don't have everybody. Yeah. And for instance, Blackboard Collaborate has like I think we have like four rooms that we can use like simultaneously. Um, so like if five of you want it at the same time, then it will be first time, first serve, you know. So you need to, if you really want to use it, you need to schedule all your meetings in advance. Do we have to okay. be to do that? We no, we're just going to send you the host link so you can host it from, from wherever you are. Mm -hmm. But some faculty do prefer to have like their first meeting here. So for instance, like that orientation meeting with you kind of make your students get familiar with the, with the environment. Uh, so that way if something wrong, if there's something wrong, we are there to, you know, like troubleshoot or, um, you know, just so you and the students can get used to, to Blackboard Collaborate or go to meetings. Yeah. Laura, what was the email she just got up? A DLHelp mm -hmm. at usi.edu. So if you you were using GoToMeeting, uh -huh. and I missed the meeting, and I wanted to see it later. All I'm going to see is that picture with voices talking. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go now to pre-recorded lectures. We got three different options. The first one is more like a storyboard um, solution where you're going to include different um, type of files. So it would be uh, video, it could be uh, Word document, spreadsheet, um, MP3, audio, whatever you want to include and make it something like a lecture of your own. Um, then we have screen recording, like if you are someone who is teaching students how to use a specific software, it's good to do screen recording and show them step by step where to go and what to do and, and all that. And then we have face-to-face -face lectures. Uh, you can record your face-to-face -face lectures instead of broadcasting, just pre-record them and then make them available. Okay. So, sorry. So, Storyboard is VoiceThread and you're already um, a little bit more familiar with VoiceThread since uh, we did a VoiceThread activity last week. Yeah? Yeah? <laughs> okay. So, uh, VoiceThread does allow multiple sources of content, and as I, as I mentioned before, video, PowerPoints, um, Word document, whatever you upload becomes like a slide. So if you have a Word document with six pages, you're going to have six different slides, and you can record voiceover, which is a comment. And then you can open that for discussion for your students, so your student can also comment. And the way you and your student comment can be video, can be audio, can be text. So there are different ways of communicating. You can record slide by slide. So if when you're doing your lectures, this is a great benefit of VoiceThread, the fact that you can have a slide, record, and if you don't want to go to the next slide, you can just leave it and then come back and record the next slide. So you don't need to do everything at a time. You can do it by, by chunks. And it is that way it's also easier to edit because if you want to change something, you just you know, the recording from a specific slide, you change it. Um, as I said, it allows, allows uh, asynchronous discussion and student engagement is uh, encouraged. Okay. Yes? Um, I, I was talking to uh, people in my faculty community about using online technology. Uh -huh. And uh, someone in that group said that what she does is she breaks her lectures into you know, meaningful components. Uh -huh. For a number of reasons. One is so that way students don't have a whole hour or whatever to listen. Oh, yeah. They can pop in now. Mm -hmm. um, but also, if they just need to have a reminder of, you know, so the theories. Let's yes. Say, one of the theories they don't remember, and there's a little that they can just go look at that one theory mm -hmm. scrolling through here. Mm -hmm. Is VoiceThread the one to use for that? You can use VoiceThread however you want. So you can create a short VoiceThread presentation that would be only five minutes mm -hmm. introducing one topic and then you can do another one so it's really up to you 
Um, I do recommend it to make it shorter, specific topics, um, but I cannot tell you it has to be that way. Um, Voice it does give you the flexibility. If you want it to be an hour long, then it would be an hour long. So it's so really up to you. Yeah. Only be able to use VoiceThread? Yeah. So no. No, you can use other tools to do lectures. So um, we're going to go over other, you know, lecture recording tools, but it's not, it doesn't have a time limit. So it's really up to you how long you make it. Does that make sense? Yeah. For, for VoiceThread and for any other tool. So which ones would have a search tool then for the students to be able to go back through? I mean, can they just like back, rewind real quickly? And get yeah, they can. It's like a slideshow. And you're going to see it here. I'm going to show you this one. But you can go, oh, well, this one is just one slide. Um, but they can go slide by slide. And if they want to go back, then they have the option to go back, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the same if it's a video that you recorded. With a video, you can also go back. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm going to make the same mistake again. This is how they will upload it here. Okay. So I just love all these recordings. Just Welcome. You have just tuned in. <laughs> The stuff. <laughs> Hi, I'm Pam Paget, and I'm very excited about this course and ready to meet the other students in it and learn many new things. Okay, you had a question? Yeah, I see that this is a video interface. So uh -huh. Hello, my name is Janice Colson, Sorry. and I'm a student in the Humanities 211 class. Okay. So if I don't want the video there, mm -hmm. Can I still have, use VoiceThread with just yeah. voiceover? Yeah. And no video in there? Yeah, I'm going to show you another video. Because it might be midnight <laughs> in India. <laughs> <laughs> and I might be still pretty. Yeah, but it's not live. You can record it in the morning when you're all pretty and stuff and then make it available to them, right? <laughs> oh, man. You can record all of your lectures for the entire course during a couple of days. Yeah. Change clothes in between. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A, a professor asked me the same thing. Like, do I need to change clothes? And I was like, I don't think it matters. So they put in the solution. Oh, yeah. She wore the same outfit every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So you see, this is a slide, and she's talking. And what she did, she did like a case study where students need to, you know, participate. Now I can upload stuff in there and highlight things yep. as I talk. Yep, yep, there's like a, a pencil tool where you, you know, circle things and, and do all that. And you know, uh, someone, uh, Vonda Coster, would tell me that he gives them a little test to see if they actually watch it. And it'll be something like, what color was my tie? Uh-huh. Like, or when did the monkey, like, they'll have it break to a little monkey. And yeah. Music in the middle. Yeah. What, what time did it break to the music yeah. in the monkey? Yeah. I had a professor that would put, like, questions like that on as a bonus question, like on a test, you know, to see if you really paid attention. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyways, that's the idea of VoiceThread. And, again, you can upload any type of file. So... At one time I did, I uploaded like, you know, like tech talks. Uh, yeah, I uploaded an MP3 file for students to listen to on VoiceThread. And then I put like a lot of questions after that to see if they, you know, um, really listen to, to, the, to the podcast.
so. Now okay. How they respond back though? Oh, okay. So hold on. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, not live then. Yeah, yeah how, how does that feature work? Okay, let me go back. USI. Without a voice thread. Dot com. And again, all the all these details, like the student technology consultants, they're going to teach you how to do that. So, um, because I want to also show you. Oops, I have like five minutes. So they're going to post a comment, basically, and it's the same way you do. Um, so, for instance, the syllabus template, what we were doing, I can comment and it will be an audio record. I would like to hear you. Oh, I hate my voice. Okay. And then uh, webcam <laughs> and then text. So there are like three ways of doing that. And that's the same way you record the, the voiceover. So it's very, it's very simple. Um, okay. So let's go back. How would they respond to a certain other person's comment? The same way you would respond in, a, in here. So I would say regarding what, you know, you ex person said you know it's not like no it's not a voice it's not a uh, blackboard discussion where you have like threads and no okay. you have to refer to someone else's comment more quick question i remember yeah. on voice it said something about um exporting or embedding credits are we able to just import or export the hyperlink to include no, I don't. I don't get it. What? Um, Boisterous said something about exporting and embedding, and it was like credits, five credits to do so. Are oh, that's because hyperlinks to certain things. Insert hyperlinks. No. From Boisterous to Blackboard. Oh right? yes, yes, yes. So you can embed it on Blackboard. Yep. Mm -hmm. Via hyperlink only, right? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. It could be. It could be a link, and it could be embedded where you can actually see the the voice thread on Blackboard. Does that make sense? As a video. Yeah. And you can even comment. So they don't need to get out of Blackboard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. OK, so let's go ahead and uh, really go over the screen recording um, solutions also. So Blackboard Collaborate, the same way you, you, you know, lead uh, a live I don't know, session, you just need to hit the record button and without anybody there, you can record a session with, you know, voiceover and going through slides or doing screen recording. The same thing you can do with GoToMeetings. And the same thing, obviously, you can do with, with Panopto. But you just need to log into Blackboard Collaborate and go to meetings and without anybody there, you can, you know, walk a student through a software or record a session of where to find X on Blackboard. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So Panopto allows you to do screen recording. And this is, for instance, one of the sessions we recorded for uh, one of our, it's like a video for, for students to know where to find out like resources and all that. So this is Ashley. I don't know how to put it. And anytime you want to return to that first page, that main page, you can go ahead and click on the do assign logo up here. So any tab we're going to be in. So you see, I double click and the video, it's in full. Go ahead and just press the do assign. You'll full screen. So moving on to the next tab, there's students. And this is mainly for getting involved on campus. So anyways, you can do that with Panopto, especially um, at the beginning where they don't know where anything is on Blackboard. There's always a, it's always a good idea to have like initial recording and let them know here's where you find, you know, whatever you, you want to do. Okay. And I got the spinning thing. Okay. So something else that you can do with Panopto is that if on your classroom you use a document camera or if you use a smart board, you can record the screen or record everything you're doing on, on the smart board or everything you're doing on the document camera. And that is, that is really good for, for faculty who, who teach like economics and teach things that you need to show graphs and, and do things like that. So I'm going to show you 
um, what Dr. Hameda, is that how you pronounce that? I forget. Yeah. yeah. Um, how he did. Of skipping over a complete cell to reach another yeah. complete cell. So we move from here to 110. We don't go 90 and then 110. Did I pause? No. Go straight to 110. So he's, see, he's using the document camera, he could write and do all that, so that's very useful. One thing, and back where we start, skipping over this. We'll see shortly why do we have to skip, but we said it's okay to... He was like, oh no, don't show them. It's like, you're awesome, you need to show it. <laughs> okay. Did you say, so. you say you're going to do blackboard? Smartboard and document camera. Mm -hmm. Can you also use the bamboo? Um, yeah, you can use the bamboo, but uh, what I'm thinking is like the bamboo. It makes it more complicated. I don't know. I don't know why. I'll, I'm gonna show you something that is simpler right now than the bamboo tablets, because. The bamboo tablets is, I don't know, for, I, I'm having trouble just uploading the canvas and all, doing all that kind of stuff. But you have one, right? So you already, yeah. So, yep. Yeah, you can, you can, do, you can do that with your, yeah, you can do that, yeah. So you can, so you can mm -hmm. bring up your PowerPoint and then just use your bamboo. Yes, and yes, mm -hmm. you can do that. Um, but it doesn't, if you want to actually draw like you're drawing on, on the on the whiteboard then it, it's not going to be a powerpoint it they come with a software that's sort of like a canvas where you can draw mm -hmm. so you're going to use that or they're also like free online canvas where you can also also draw so that's what you what you would use and um can academy i don't know if you've heard of that that's what they use they use the bamboo tablet and they have a software that is, and I haven't been able to test it because it's, well, that's not an excuse because we have a lot of PCs, but since I work on a Mac and what they use is not a Mac friendly, but they, on their website, they have like everything that they use to, to do their videos. And it's a bamboo tablet and a Canvas application. Yeah. So, yep. Mm -hmm. Purchase, or we have three available and you can check out those and right now I'm gonna show you also I need to really keep going uh, I need to show you um, another tool that you can do the same thing but it's with an iPad and we have like 15 iPads here that you can check out um, anytime so that is that is another option so this is it it's edu creations and show me so it is so it is a canvas on an iPad and you can draw with your stylus and record it. So it's going to be recording your voice and recording whatever you, you draw on that, on that um, whiteboard. What? It is an app, two apps that do creation. And they do the same thing, so you just, I haven't figured out the difference between those two. It's like they're the same thing on the market. But you have to have a stylus for that, right? Yes. Or you can, I mean, yeah. You don't have to. It is recommended because it's more. Right, it's yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there a cost for the download? No, it's free. And again, there. Are, if you don't have an iPad, they are installed in on all of our iPads, and you can check one out and do your recordings and and whatnot. So these are two separate apps that yeah, do the same. The same thing. Yes. Um, so again, this is suitable for problem solving. Uh, you can record short clips. You don't need PowerPoints, but you can insert pictures. So you can draw on pictures and graph and whatever you, you want to do. Um, it says either what kind of headset is needed. With the iPads, there's like an integrated mic, and so I don't think you need anything. Um, the only thing is like it's only available on an iPad and iPhone. If you have an Android tablet, I'm researching other options for Android if you want to use your own tablet. Um, and you can embed those videos on Blackboard too. So, okay, so this is an example of how it would look like. Let's see, I think I have it here. Set a draw and to arrange the numbers in order for 
And you can also assign students to do the same thing if they have the means to do that, you know. So you would know like the process that they use. But not everybody has an iPad. Anyways. And let's see. And again, I got the spinning wheel. Okay, and then you already know Panapto, which is face-to-face -face recording. So the same thing. You're going to, this is the, the less time consuming because you just teach face-to-face -face and you record it and make it available. Um, but it is, I know it is hard for students to sit on in front of a computer for an hour to listen to a lecture. So that's something you, you also need to consider. But I always tell faculty that this is a good backup plan. Like if you did not get to do all your lectures and you're teaching the same class online, do record them. And then if you need to use them because you didn't have time to do your lectures, then you can use that. OK. Um, yes. What? Students who miss class can go back online. Yes, exactly. You can make it available for students who miss class, yeah. Now, on, when we talked about VoiceBread, you said it's very storyboard, so you can make it in chunks and then edit it uh -huh. uh, very easily. Can you not do a very similar thing by making very short and opto uh, recordings? Yep. And then if you have one of those you need to record, just have them watch those in sequence. That you have mm -hmm. one, just edit one. Yep, that's a very good idea. You can so do so that. You so you can get the same effect in Panopto, which is very simple, yeah. that you would have in VoiceThread. Yeah, you can, with, with Panopto you can edit, but it's like a, on the web editing tool. So if you don't have a good connection, it's really cumbersome. Well, but if you, if you had, uh, let's say you had a, a Little chunks 20, like 20 minute yep. recording, mm -hmm. and you broke it down into five minute segments. Mm -hmm. All you'd have to do would be edit a five six mm -hmm. five to create a new five minute segment, take the old mm -hmm. one out, and the new one in. Yeah, but the benefit over that um, with VoiceThread is that you can, for instance, if you, you have a slide and you have your voiceover. If you want to change the slide and not the voiceover, you can do that with VoiceThread. Okay. And if you want to change to delete your comment, and not change the slide, you can do that too. Okay. Yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. And this is a live lecture. I don't know if you're familiar with Panopto, but I'm going to show you uh, our town hall meeting. And this is how the video looks like. Da, da, da. So this is the classroom, you know, this is the, the professor talking, and it's, Gay, it's Richard, you know, um, our IT director. And then the slides are here. And you're going to have... I'm not sure where the mics are in the room. It's not really good. And you're going to have, like, all the, the PowerPoint here, and you can also, you have, like, a search, so... If you're looking for something on the PowerPoints, it would also search for that. So that's that is very um, useful too. So da -da -da. I think going back to Nina's question, mm -hmm. is that same search option functional on VoiceThread? Or no. Functional on no, on Panopto. Yeah. And <coughs> okay, so to finish my presentation, I'm gonna um, show you the two tools that we usually recommend for faculty for office hours and each college has their uh, own office hours requirements and we put those requirements um, on the Blackboard site. So the difference between Skype and Google Hangouts, um, both are video, you can talk, you know, it's like a video um, 
chat and so they have video and audio capability they have mobile application but with Skype and you need to determine if this is important to you because it might not be with Skype you have one-on-one -on -one video conferencing for free but with Google Hangouts you can have up to 10 people um, with Skype you can send files via, via you know Skype but with Google Hangouts you can have you can share your screen you can do remote desktop so if if someone gives you permission you can manage someone else's computer um, you also have integration with Google Drive so if you we're using Google Drive right now and it is really nice to work in a single document where everybody is um, you know working on that on that document and have those people who are working on the document also like on, on, a, on a video conferencing so you can have a working meeting and, and students can have like their own working meeting uh, using Google Hangouts so work on a document and at the same time be talking on a video camera um, so with Google Hangout the advantage is that you already created a Google account with me so so you already have access to it and with Skype you have to create an account but the benefit with Skype is that it's a standalone application so so you would have that on your computer versus Google Hangouts that you need to go to uh, you know Google Plus and then you know log in and, and, and look for Google Hangouts and all that so that is the pros and cons and you determine which one you want to use okay so I don't know if we have much time for questions, we really don't, but you know that you can email me anytime. Now, I have the sign-up sheets here, and if you have not been able to access, um, if you have not been able to access Blackboard, uh, let me know so I can um, help you to log in or voice thread or anything else. And let's see, okay, so really quick, this sign-up sheet um, for you to, so you already know which technology you want to use, so you're going to schedule a meeting with the student technology consultant, and we have three seats here. So you're going to put your name in seat one, the time that you know best meets your, your, your schedule, and you're going to also put the technology that you want to be trained on. So if a second person can do the same time and the same technology, they can write their name on seat two. If some of that does not, you know, meet your, your needs, then you choose another time. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to pass them around really so quick. Can yes, yes. So you can, you can sign up for a session just for voice, voice thread and another session just for Google Hangouts. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Vimeo or Vimeo.com website? What was that? The Google, Google Hangouts isn't a Google address, it's a Vimeo. Oh yeah, because we uploaded a tutorial uh, for them to know how to use Google Hangouts okay. on Vimeo. What is Vimeo.com? Is it a place? What is that? Vimeo is a place to upload uh, videos. videos. It's like a YouTube. You're just using it like a YouTube. Yes. Mm -hmm. And now, I also have this book, and there's a really good chapter about uh, copyright. And I included some resources on our website. But if you want to do that and read this, this uh, chapter, I have a checkout form. And I have like a bunch of books here if you want to do that. So, um, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Unless what? Any what? E -book. Uh, no. I mean, there is this one. You mean if there's an ebook for this one? Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> It's more than just copyright, right? It's got other things. Oh yeah, it's totally about online online learning. But um, the book, like the chapter that I was um, reading today, is really good about you know um, copyright and all that. But uh, it's like how to engage students and how to how to develop the whole you know online course. So if you want to check this out and and return it by the end of the of the session, you can do that. The end of the course, yeah. So I just have the forms that you. Just let me know the return date, and that's it. Yeah. Especially because it's hard to determine, like, is this, like, which resources I can include, and how do I need to cite it, and, and all that. And you, I don't know if you're familiar with Creative Commons, 
and also like online resources that are open to everybody and that talks about that and um, yeah that's really good so yeah whenever you're ready you can come here and and sign up and take that book take one of those <laughs>